Before we get to the standards framework for cluster studies, let's talk about some key concepts that can affect the rating of cluster RCTs. In the attrition module, which is module two, we discussed how attrition causes the composition of the analytic sample to be different from the composition of the initial sample in an individual level RCT, potentially threatening a study's ability to measure the true effect of the intervention. Cluster RCTs also face threats to the composition of the initial sample. To think through these threats, we'll keep in mind an example. Consider a study that randomly assigns classrooms to conditions and examines the effect of the intervention on the achievement of students in those classrooms. First, this study may experience cluster level attrition, where entire clusters are lost after random assignment. For example, in a study that assigned classrooms to conditions, researchers may have been unable to administer an assessment to an entire classroom of students. The WWC considers the excluded classroom to be cluster level attrition. Cluster level attrition changes the composition of the set of clusters that comprise the intervention and comparison groups. In addition to the loss of full clusters, the composition of individuals within the remaining clusters may change. When outcomes are not analyzed for all individuals in the clusters, this can be considered individual non-response. For example, in the remaining classrooms from our classroom level RCT with the achievement outcome, some students may have switched into other classrooms or transferred out of the school. Others may have been absent on the day the achievement test was administered. All of these students whose outcomes were not measured contribute to individual non-response. Note that some individuals lost after random assignment may not be considered to be individual non-response. The WWC counts individuals as non-response only if they were present in clusters at a specified point in time, which could occur after random assignment. We'll talk more about how the WWC calculates individual non-response later in this module. Finally, the composition of individuals within clusters may change when individuals enter or join the clusters after random assignment. For example, our study may have randomly assigned classrooms to conditions in the fall of the school year and measured the achievement outcome in the spring. Some students may have transferred into study classrooms mid-year from other classrooms in the school or from other schools. If the study included these students in the analytic sample, then outcomes were analyzed for some students who were never subject to random assignment. When any of these three threats to composition occur, the groups can become dissimilar, which can lead to bias in the estimated effect or impact of the intervention. Recall from previous modules that bias is a systematic difference between the true impact of the intervention and the estimated impact, which can lead to incorrect conclusions about the effect of the intervention. The WWC uses two terms to describe the individual sample numbers who contributed to compositional changes within clusters. Stayers are individuals who were in clusters at the time of random assignment and stay until the end, contributing outcome data to the analytic sample. Those who leave the clusters after random assignment may contribute to individual level non-response. Joiners are individuals who are not in clusters at random assignment, but who enter later. When joiners contribute outcome data to the analytic sample, they can contribute to compositional changes. Here's another example to illustrate the two terms. Consider a study that randomly assigns schools one month before school begins. The study obtains school rosters, that is, lists of students who were expected to attend each school, at the time of random assignment. Among the students who were present when the study collected outcome data and were included in the analytic sample, those listed on the original school rosters are stayers, and those not on the rosters are joiners. Joiners might include students who enrolled on the first day of school or who transferred in at some point during the school year. Let's look at an example in more detail. This animation illustrates the concepts of stayers and joiners in a cluster study. In this example, schools were randomly assigned so that the intervention and comparison conditions in each include two schools. In this study, the schools are the clusters, represented by the groups of student figures, and the students within each school are the individuals. The figures are different colors, representing different baseline characteristics, like pre-intervention achievement levels. 
The students on rosters at the time of random assignment, on the left, are similar in the intervention and comparison groups. However, the students who the authors actually analyzed within each condition, on the right, are not similar. The students in the intervention group schools changed because of individual non-response and joiners. The yellow and green students in the intervention group left the study. These students were replaced in the analytic sample by new red students. These new red students are joiners. All orange and red students who were originally in the intervention condition remained in the study. These are stayers. All students in the comparison condition are also stayers. Although the individuals within the analytic intervention and comparison groups were compositionally similar at the time of random assignment, that is not the case for the analytic samples. For example, imagine that the students shown in red in this illustration are among the highest scoring students, so that on average they outperform the students shown in orange, yellow, and green. There are equal numbers of red individuals in the intervention and comparison groups at random assignment, but at follow-up, the study experiences some individual non-response and joiners enter the clusters. Now, because there are more red individuals in the intervention group than in the comparison group, the intervention group has higher average test scores at follow-up than the comparison group. As a result, even if the intervention has no effect, it may appear to have an impact due to the compositional changes. Just like attrition in individual level RCTs, Compositional changes in cluster RCTs can result in a biased impact estimate if something other than the intervention is causing the difference between the groups in the study. As we've seen, the presence of joiners in a cluster RCT can produce differences in the composition of the intervention and comparison groups. Therefore, the WWC standards for cluster RCTs include an assessment of the risk of bias due to joiners. The risk of bias due to joiners is highest when there is reason to suspect individuals may choose clusters based on the availability of the intervention. For example, consider a study that randomly assigned schools to conditions in May to examine the effect of a school turnaround program. In June, as part of the program, one of the intervention schools hired a new principal who was well regarded in the district. Throughout the summer, any student in the district could apply for enrollment in intervention schools. Some families may have chosen to enroll in the intervention school because of the new principal. These newly enrolled students are joiners because they were not enrolled in the schools at the time of random assignment in May. In addition, they may differ systematically from the students originally enrolled in the school because the new students' families were motivated to enroll due to the intervention. The WWC distinguishes between studies that do or do not have a risk of bias due to joiners by talking about whether the studies can satisfy WWC standards for evidence of effects on individuals or only on clusters. When bias due to joiners is unlikely, a cluster study can satisfy WWC standards for evidence of effects on individuals. This means that the WWC considers individuals in these studies, whether stayers or joiners, as good as randomly assigned. So the integrity of the random assignment of individuals within clusters is maintained even if joiners are present. Therefore, these studies are eligible to obtain the highest WWC group design rating of meets WWC group design standards without reservations. Even when there is a risk of bias due to joiners, a cluster study might still satisfy WWC standards for evidence of effects on clusters. This means that the measured effect of the intervention represents not only the effect of the intervention on the outcomes of stayers, but also any compositional effect the intervention has on outcomes through joiners and leavers. Findings in these studies represent the effect of the intervention on clusters, including the possibility of compositional changes for individuals within clusters. Because some of the measured effect may be due to changes in the individuals within clusters after random assignment, these studies are only eligible to meet WWC group design standards with reservations. The distinction between satisfy WWC standards for evidence of effects on individuals and clusters is based on whether a compositional changes may affect the outcomes measured in the study, not on the type of analysis conducted in the study. For example, a study that conducted a school-level analysis of student achievement outcomes could satisfy WWC standards for evidence of effects on individuals, 
despite not reporting any student level analysis. The level of the units used for the analysis has no bearing on a cluster study's rating.